Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Gene Worsley. I'll be your host for the first session of the Miller's Don't Kick It Old School webinar series. Today's session is introduction to the New School School of Photography. In the upcoming weeks, we'll have a series of webinars lined up for you covering a number of different school type of topics. Uh, we hope you'll be able to join us for all those sessions. During our session, we'll be joined by two very experienced photographers, Neil Freed and Brian Blanken here for us. So we're happy to have them join us during our, our sessions. Neil is a photographer and owner of the Freed Spirit Photography Studio, the premier school photographer in the Washington, D.C. area. Brian is a photographer as well as a partner with Neil in the Freed Spirit business. So with that in mind, uh, I would like to turn over to, to Neil and Brian here. It's my honor, my pleasure to introduce Neil Freed and Brian Blanken of Freed Spirit. Glad they're taking time with us here today. Uh, so, gentlemen, you have the floor. I can't believe you got us into this. We got like, I think we have one more minute. I mean, your dad was right. You can't say no. You're always <laughs> roping us into stuff. I, I mean, I don't want to give away all our secrets. I mean, it's, this is right, come right, on, right, come on, yeah. right. First of all, A, you know, there are no secrets. And B, it totally doesn't matter because nobody listens anyway. Uh, if no one's listening, then why are we even doing it? Guys, you're live. You're live. Already? Yes. Whoa, whoa. Yes. whoa, whoa. Oh, hey. Oh. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hi. Hey, Gene. How's that for a smooth transition? So oh, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, our goal is not to bore. Not to bore. So, first of all, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm I'm Neil. This is this is Brian. Five years ago, if somebody had said to us that we're going to be doing a webinar. The Miller is going to ask us to do a webinar on school photography. I would have been laughing hysterically. To give you a little bit of, of background, and we'll, I'll be brief, um, my wife and I started Freed Photography in 1994. Brian joined us as a partner in 2001. We were recognized as the best wedding photography studio in Washington, which is a very competitive town. Monty was here, Clay was here, um, some other people that, um, Linda Pa, that some of you may know. There is a very, very um, high quality standard of photography. And we were recognized by the leading publication as being the best in Washington. Brian joined us as a partner in 2001. We used to do somewhere around 350 weddings a year. We do a lot of corporate events. We do a lot of family portraits. We had a very successful um, high end photography business. And everything was great. We were growing 15, 20% a year. Um, we were fat and dumb and happy, and we thought this is going to continue forever. I don't. Well, that, let me just say one with. I don't know if any of you have experienced um, what we've experienced in 2009, 2010, 2011, beginning with the economic downturn and the business changing dramatically from people saying, "Who's the best? Well, who's the most expensive? Great, that's who we'll hire." To here's what I want to spend. Here's what I want, and do it, or I'll find somebody who will. So our core business changed absolutely dramatically. Um, and fortunately for us, one of our clients said, hey, I'm, I want you guys to photograph our kids' school. So of course we said no, because who wants to be a school photographer? I mean, that's considered worse than a wedding photographer. Um, and just kind of going back, I think if you, if, I'm assuming some of the people that we're talking to uh, our wedding photographers or want to get in the school business. I mean, one of the things that, you know, today we're going to try and talk to you about is why you might want to consider getting into the school business. And then over the next four sessions, we're going to talk to you how, in terms of exactly how we sell and we market and we fulfill and we shoot in a way that um, really works for us. And, um, well, and I think it works for the parents of the schools the way we've grown. Yeah, so it, it's just a, a different way. Unfortunately, when you know, five or six years ago when that client asked us to photograph the school, we really didn't know anything about the school business. In fact, um, you know, we were, we were like, no, we're not going to do it. We said, I think, two or three times. But like I said, uh, you know, Neil, uh, he has trouble saying no. He leads with the yes, which is always great um, most, of the, most, <laughs> most, most of the time. Um, and, and, and he said yes, and, and which was kind of a... Uh, at the time, I'd say not a great decision, but now looking back, probably the best, one of the best decisions we've we made as as, as a company. Um, so when we agreed to do it, we showed up at, at the school um, to take pictures on a blue background, just like you're supposed to do, because 
like I said, we didn't really know any better. Head and shoulder only, on a, one per kid, on a blue background. And we were kind of armed with our sophisticated system, which I'm going to show you guys. On how to identify the students. Yeah, because yeah, you have to identify the students and do all this stuff. Um, we had a Rima notebook paper and two Sharpies because you always need backup. You know, you right. can't just have one Sharpie. So um, we would come and we would write the kid's name. they take their picture in front of it, and we'd, and we'd take the picture. And that was that. So Neil and I are, are standing there watching our fantastic, we're taking beautiful pictures. And, and we have great photographers. Our studio had grown to it. We had a number of other photographers that were photographing weddings and corporate events. And we're great photographers in their own right. So they're doing the photography, and we're watching. Yeah, we're watching, and it's... And we're like, oh, this is great. We're, we're taking pictures. And then I kind of, you know, I don't know, can't remember. If he looked, we looked at each other and we kind of said, this is really stupid. Like, we can't really take a better blue background picture. And they wanted us to photograph the school because the parents wanted better pictures. So we look outside and we say, why don't we just outside? And this school is like a college campus. I mean, it's beautiful. And so we're like, let's do it. So I go outside and I set up outside and I do what I normally would do at a family portrait or a portrait of a kid or a wedding or whatever. I, you know, off-camera flash and did it kind of, you know, 7,200 7, lens. And we had just a look and a feel that was, that was really cool. And what, 10, 15, 20 pictures per student yeah. working with the student to get great pictures like you normally would. Right, smile, no smile, and different poses, different positions, and just letting the, the kids kind of relax and be themselves. So we did this with every kid. And, of course, we then had to, to have them take their piece of paper <laughs> out to me and take the picture and then back and forth. And we took the pictures and it seemed to go, that part went... The photography part was easy went, part. Went pretty well because that's what we do. We're photographers. We take pictures. The problem really happened when we got back to the studio is now we have... Uh, 680 students. 680 students, 20, you know, 30 pictures a kid. Oh, and, and we shot raw because we want to make sure that the quality, the quality was fantastic. Um, and we have two series, indoors and outdoors, and we have to, in order to sell them, we couldn't do a pre-order or even an order form because what picture would they get? So we had to figure out how to put the photos online, which meant every student had to have their own gallery because they needed their own password. So we manually created 680 galleries by hand, and then we had to look at the pictures and read the name and copy them in twice, once for the indoor, once for the... It was a I mean, it took weeks just to make all that happen. Right, so then we finally get that, and I think the pictures, they were definitely up by Christmas. I don't know how many. No, 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 it was a few weeks. A few weeks, but it, it, was, it was, you know, and it's also, by the way, we're doing 300 weddings that year, so it's the fall. We're pretty busy. We're, we're so busy. We, and we're kind of, I wouldn't say we're disrespecting the school, but it's not a top priority because we don't really, we're not in the school business. We only said yes to make this one lady go away, and we think we're never going to do it again. <laughs> right, so we do it, and we finally get it online, and fast forward, people actually ordered the pictures. It was a lot. A lot. And it was they kept ordering and they kept ordering and we're like, this is interesting. And maybe, maybe, maybe there's, there's something here. So So we go to a meeting at the school in May to have a recap and Brian and I are walking through the parking lot saying to each other, there's no way they're gonna want us back. They have to have seen behind the curtain that we had no idea what we're doing. And even though parents got online within a you know a few weeks and everything happened really the way it should have Behind the scenes, if you looked, it was total chaos. And we're saying there's no way they're going to want us back. Oh, well, you know, it would have been nice, but it doesn't really matter because why would we go into this business anyway? You know, there are these huge guys out there. How are we going to compete? So one and done, we're done. You know, that'll be yeah, it. Yeah, because I, I, I even said to Neil, literally we were walking out or walking in, and I go, you know, if they want us back, do we even want to do it? You know, right. we were like, we weren't walking in going definitely yes. Um, just because we had a, a great business, and just being a school photographer with that blue background kind of way wasn't something that we really wanted to do. We wanted to take pictures like that we normally did, or that pictures that you can really be proud of, and that have, have creativity and interest and engagement. And, and they're fun to take. Yeah, and they're that fun. You're proud of. Yeah, they're fun for the for the kid. They're fun for the photographer, and and the school appreciates it, and the parents really appreciate it, and you, it really kind of worked. The, the photographic part. So we get to the meeting, and little did we know that the two people from the school we're meeting with were having the mirror conversation with each other that we had. They told us afterwards, they were saying to each other, oh my God, what if Freed won't come back and do it again? What are we going to tell the parents? They're going to kill us. We, so they were desperate to have us come back. The parents loved the pictures. The school loved the pictures. The school loved that 
everything was online. They didn't have to hand out order forms, collect money, turn it in, receive the pictures, give them to the kids in the backpack. Parents aren't calling saying, where's my picture? Teacher goes to the bottom of the backpack. It's all cr And now they can't get a reorder and who's paying for it. And we didn't know anything about what we were doing, but it seemed to us like it worked. And we heard about a convention that everybody should write this down, SPAC, SPAC. I think it stands for School Photographers Association of California. I have no idea why they call themselves that, because people come from all over the country. But it's a school photographers convention, and there are vendors, and it's a trade show, and speakers. And I heard about this the Christmas after this fall shoot, and I said, I got to go, because I, there's got to be software, there's got to be things we could learn. So I go to the convention, and it was really interesting to me, because everybody I told what I was doing, without exception, everyone said to me, you can't do that. That won't work. You can't take multiple pictures per kid. You can't sell online. That's not school photography. And I'm like, well, but it seems to be working. The parents were thrilled. The school was thrilled. It generated a lot of revenue. And oh, by the way, one of the really, really nice things about school photography, compared to any other kind of portrait or wedding or virtually, or even corporate for the most part, we did a lot of weddings, and we could do the wedding of the year in Washington, and often we did. But I am always, like, running around nervous. And here we are on a Saturday night doing, like, the wedding of the year, and I'm like, oh, my God, what are we going to do next year? Yeah, I, I, mean, I remember, like, Memorial Day weekend, it was, like, 2008 or nine, and we, we had 27 weddings that weekend. That weekend. And it was like, this is fantastic. We have 27 weddings. It was, like, our busy, busy, busiest weekend ever. And then Neil looks at me, and he goes, what are we going to do next year? we got to replace all 27, and if we want to grow, then we have to add another one. And I'm an old guy, and I remember when I started in, in photography. I worked in New York. I'm from New York with the Fred Marcus Studio, which was then, and I think still is, the finest wedding portrait studio in, 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 in the country probably. And we would show up at a wedding, and if there was a bride who had one or two sisters and bridesmaids, back in the old day, you were guaranteed of photographing everybody's wedding, all the sisters and all the bridesmaids, because nobody knew who was good. They weren't going to go to the yellow pages. And if somebody found a good vendor, everybody used them. Now, in that same scenario, we're guaranteed not to do any of those weddings. And I don't know if any of you have experienced this. Every bride wants her own. She wants to find her own artist. She wants to do. She doesn't want her sister's wedding. She doesn't want her friend's wedding. She wants experience of finding her own. Even if it doesn't work out, no bride thinks it's not going to work out for them. So we went from where 30-40% of the business could have been direct referral to virtually zero in thousands and thousands and thousands of weddings. We had one client with three daughters who booked us for all three weddings up front because one girl was getting married, the other two were engaged, and he did the same wedding for all three girls other than the groom and the cake and the gown. And they were okay with that. Otherwise, every single wedding, we had to go out and get and market and meet and compete. So it's a long-winded way of saying one of the things we recognized early on with schools is that once you get a school, if you do a nice job, you're back again every single year. So if you start with one, you don't have to add one to stay at one. You add one, now you're at two, and then you're at three. The, that math, believe it or not, over time becomes very, very compelling. And, I, and, I, and, and getting back just to kind of where we were, because I feel like, I don't know who's sitting on the other side of the screen, but I feel like we were you guys. You know, we were there um, 2008, 2009, 2010, you know, and, and we just saw our business kind of start to, to, to drop. We looked at, like, Wedding Wire, for example, had maybe in our town, you know, a, a couple hundred photographers on it, where now it's probably seven or 8,000, if not more. So the noise and how do you even compete was really challenging. Not to mention the party planners who were, you know, referring us a lot of business, they were having the same kind of problem as we were. So now there's 10 times as many party planners. So how do you market? How do you spend? How do you get in front to stay top of mind with all these people just to get an opportunity at the six weddings they're going to do to be one of five people they're going to look at to not get hired? So we really looked at, like, how can we have a sustainable business where we can work kind of really kind of hard for a short period of time when it's in season, not so much when it's not, make more money, and have an annuity where every year we're just building our base. And that's how we kind and, of... And I guess one thing I want to... When we talk about school photography, I suspect that there's a disconnect. 
because I say the word school photography and probably most people listening think about the what I'm going to call the old approach stayed one picture per student maybe green screen you know kind of then sit here smile click next 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 which is I mean the students aren't comfortable being photographed like that the schools aren't really happy with it and the person taking the pictures I mean let's be honest it's kind of a hateful job everything is preset and all you have to do is get the kids attention click I mean I'm not a good enough photographer to take one click and think I've captured the best of that student particularly everybody sitting in the same position in the same pose that's not what we call photography so when we talk about school photography we're really meaning the kind of photography that you would do now we do a lot of it outdoors because of the weather where we are but it doesn't matter if you're indoors or outdoors we have schools where we work on seamless paper and we'll have six foot rolls of seamless paper and we'll still photograph the kids 10 15 20 pictures per kid laughing jumping thumbs up making funny faces as well as more traditional pictures so that parents when they go online they've got 10 or 15 pictures to look at and choose from they're gonna buy something they're going to buy something and it's the kind of photography that you're going to enjoy doing and the student is actually going to enjoy being a part of so we've gone from one school to over a hundred school in in six years and I will tell you because I'm the person who does a lot of the meetings the meetings with the principals are getting shorter and easier because now that our name is getting out nobody wants bad photography nobody wants to be treated poorly they just didn't know they had a choice so when we think about school photography, when our schools think about school photography, they think about it the way you would want to think about photography. So I, I actually have this belief, um, you know, the, the, there's a saying, there's nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. Well, and I, and I think that there is an idea whose time is right now. And that idea is that school photography, and I don't even really like to call it school photography because we don't take pictures of schools. We do student portraits at schools. But everybody thinks in terms of school photography, so I'm going to use that term, but it's really student portraits. But student portraits or school photography really can be done best by independent photographers in their own market. That you don't have to do green screen, you don't have to have a convoluted production process, you don't have to have a back-end workflow that's going to kill you, and you don't have to do hateful photography because you wouldn't want to do it. But think about how hard you work to get clients. What if I said to you, there's a place where I can get you 400 clients in one meeting just like that? And you can do the kind of photography you want to do. And when you're in the market and you know people and you know principals and you know teachers and you know parent volunteers, you will literally walk down the street and have people you don't know come up to you and say, thank you so much for photographing Apple Ridge Elementary School. We love the pictures. And I tell principals when I meet with them, that they're going to have that experience and they look at me like I'm crazy and without exception every one of them does because if you do nice photography and give parents choices I mean think about it. if you had a blank piece of paper and said how can I set up a business to minimize my sales you would end up with something similar to school photography today okay make the parents get an order form in advance and then they've got to pick a package most of which have sizes they don't want or care about. If they want an 8x10, they first have to buy a package. And then they've got 27 options. I mean, I look at some of these order forms and I can't figure out totally how to order. But I haven't seen the picture yet. So when the one mom who got us into this business, what she said that really got us to say OK, she was, Neil, I am so sick of getting an envelope home, picking a package, sticking it in my check, sending it off, and then waiting for the picture and hoping I'll like it when it comes. And I never do. Or not hate it. And not, right? So are they buying the most or are they buying the least? So the whole setup is backwards. When I went to the SPAC convention, everyone's telling me what I'm doing can't work. And everybody at the convention the first year was a big company of 100, 1,000, 10,000 schools. And they all did the same thing. They did green screen, one picture per kid, pre-order, here's the way you do it. The entire conversation in three days was about how to move the kids through the line quicker and how to buy an 8x10 print, sorry Gene, how to buy an 8x10 print for a tenth of a penny less. Every speaker, every platform spoke about that. Nobody spoke about experience. Nobody spoke about quality. Nobody spoke about the parent purchasing experience. 
It was all about move the kids through quicker and get an 8x10 unit cheaper. And I said to Brian after that meeting, I said, you know, maybe we can compete here because I don't think the stakeholders are happy with this. The companies doing it say this is the way it is and everyone thinks it's the way it is. But if you ask the stakeholders, the schools, the parents, the students, not one of them is happy with that arrangement. So we started selling pictures online and taking more than one picture. I mean, we're there anyway. The work of getting to school, getting it scheduled, showing up, that doesn't change if you come with one photographer or five. Why not have an extra photographer and increase your sales 50% and spend a little more time and do the kind of, I mean, I remember in the old days, right, when I started in photography, nobody would admit to being a school photographer. A school, a wedding, a, a, wedding, sorry, a wedding photographer, right? I'm working every Saturday night at the Waldorf Astoria, the Pierre Hotel, the same, the fanciest hotels, properties in the country, and I'm working with other photographers who work at Fred Marcus, and they weren't they weren't wedding photographers, they were portrait or commercial or news photographers. Even if they made 90% of their income from the weddings, they would never admit to being a wedding photographer because it was the lowest of the low of photography, and. I'm amazed at how that has transitioned to now. There almost are no more commercial photographers. There are no more news photographers. And they're all wedding photographers. And wedding photographers are now charging the highest prices and getting paid way more than almost any other kind of photography. Um, so I've lived through that transition and seen how a kind of genre can go from being the bottom of the dregs that nobody would even admit to, to being the most lucrative and respected type of photography. And I think that that same transition is going to happen with school photography. That the same way wedding photography used to be, you show up with eight rolls of 120 film, 96 shots, a camera, a Mamiya C330 for all you old timers, if any, with a flash, and you took, you had a shot list of 96 pictures. The bride in the mirror with her veil, and then the mom steps in, okay, and right through the bride and groom closing the hotel door with the do not disturb sign. <laughs> Okay, you took the same 96 pictures at every wedding, and they didn't pay a lot for it, the pictures weren't great, and nobody wanted to do it. Fred Marcus was one of the first people to say, wait, we can do better. We can send assistants. We can have multiple lighting. We can do portraits with multiple lighting. We can have room lights. In 1970, this was revolutionary. Nobody was doing this, but it changed the industry. And school photography also can go through a transition, because let's be honest, for the those of you who remember the battle between photojournalists and portrait photographers in the wedding world, you know, that was a big deal seven, eight years ago. Were you a classical portrait photographer or were you, you know, a photojournalist? And the classic photographers kind of, you know, looked down their nose at the photojournalists because every wrist wasn't bent and every finger extended and the tilt of every head wasn't perfect. But at the end of the day, we all know who won the war, right? The photojournalists won the war. That's what today's bride wants. Now fast forward from when this started, those brides are the moms of our school students today. What kind of picture do you think they want? Do they want one picture or do they want something more relaxed, more authentic, more real? And do they want choice? Do they want to be able to pick what they want? So the industry is changing. The parents are starting to demand it. We have schools calling us now. They don't even want a meeting. It's can I get on your calendar? Student portraits are going to go back to student portraits, and parents want choices, and they want good photography, and I do believe that this is an idea whose time has come, coupled with the fact that who better to do it than somebody who's a part of the community, somebody who knows the teachers, the school, the kids, who knows the parent volunteers. There's an opportunity here. I mean, 2007, 8, you know, our business was fun. Any business is fun when you're making money. Since then, on the wedding side of things, I mean, it's been a grind. I don't know for all of you out there, you may also have experienced a decline in business, and it's getting harder. Well, what we've seen in the school business is that it's repeatable, it's appreciated by the parents, it's appreciated by the schools, it's growable, and you can actually, and here's the crazy part, you can work less, have more fun, and make more money. And, and still be creative and like get that outlet of taking really – really nice pictures. I mean, and also when we looked at it, <clears throat> just to kind of touch on that a little bit, is we didn't we don't we can't compete with the big guys. I mean, we can't out we can't out Home Depot Home Depot. I mean, right. we, you know, we can't do that or you know, or how much better can we take a blue background picture where people are going to notice um, in terms of parents. They just want a great expression and engagement. So we looked at saying, well, 
we don't, we don't, we don't, first of all, we don't want to do it that way, and we don't have to. And now what's happening is that schools now realize there's a choice. Before, no one really, this is the way it was. There was no other option. We're just going to do it because, well, we'll go with this company, and they'll do it great, or they'll screw up, and then we'll try this company. But it's the same picture, the same experience over and over again. But now what's happening, and, and we're not obviously, you know, created outdoor photography or doing something different. I think you know, there's no new news there, but really doing it in a way that works. And, you know, we went from our one school that we did our reams of notebook paper to now well over hundreds of schools, hundreds of schools. Um, so the way we've thought about how it could work and the way we've done it and how we've fulfilled and how we've created our system and the way we work really does work and it is scalable to whether you want to shoot you know five to ten schools so you can get an extra you know ten to thirty forty fifty thousand dollars in income that's gonna that's gonna be great or even grow it to even you know well over however many schools that would be I'm sure you know Millers would love to have you over at hundred hundred schools and it'd be great so it's really as much as you want to do in a way that you can be proud of and 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 it is time it is here it's much more acceptable getting in touch with if the school doesn't work you get in front of a PTA person and you show them what kind of pictures you're gonna you want to do and engagement then it's you're you're in kind of the side door because the principal isn't gonna argue with the PTA in terms of what pictures because they're their kids so now is a great opportunity for you know you as a photographer to do something you love to get back to the passion and the um, Kind of the the, the, psych, the psychic feedback or, mm -hmm. or payback of doing great things, making a difference. I mean, one of the things that we really work on with with our photographers and in our schools and our principals is really just about being engaged with the kids and letting them be themselves and having them feel good about what they're doing and what not only just the, what the photographers doing, really what the kid is doing. Like not having it be such a hateful experience. Letting them, like if a, if a student says to me, I want to I want to make a silly face or a jump, as long as it's age appropriate and it's not going to get either of us in trouble, then I'm like, do it, go ahead, but I want to do this first. Of course, I'm going to get the traditional picture for the yearbook and the one that makes sure they're happy, but then I'm going to get expression and change of position and let the kids be great. So they walk away feeling good about themselves. It's a positive experience. So we talk to principals and, and school people, you talk about how we're going to engage with the kids to really be a benefit and make them feel great about themselves to be an additive. So when, the, so when the pictures go home and it's something different, people go, wow, that is some, that principal really cares about every aspect of my kids. You know, you know, Brian, on that point, I had a meeting, I got called into the principal's office. I got real nervous. There's a school around the corner from our studio. And I couldn't get a meeting with the principal. I only drive by it every day. And I finally got a meeting with the principal. And she explained to me that she had a long-term contract and she wasn't going to meet with me until that contract was up. But now it's up, so we're meeting. And I actually I said to her, I said, you can have any deal you want because I drive by the school every day. And every single day I grind that we don't photograph your school. <laughs> so you are absolutely in the catbird seat. Tell me what you want. You're going to get it because we want to photograph this school. So we photographed the school and we do it the way we did it. and and. The kid, I mean, the kids loved it. The parents loved it. The staff was impressed at how we treated them and how we did even their simple picture for their ID card and, and, and for the yearbook. But about halfway through the year, I get a call from the principal's admin that she wants me to come in. She wants to have a meeting. So it's like being a kid all over again. Oh my God, what you know? What I do wrong? Being called to the principal, principal's office. But she just really, she just wanted to recap what was good, what she wanted to tweak, you know, you know, what was good, what was bad, what she wanted to improve. But one of the things she said to me quite literally was what impressed her more than anything was that she got feedback from the parents that the students were interested in what picture the parents were buying. That the kids were saying, I want this picture from my, my room, you could buy this one, I want grandma to have this. They remembered the pictures they took. They remembered what they did and how they were standing. And they were, in, now, I didn't think that the, that was so terrific, it, but I'm telling you the principal thought that the engagement of the students was absolutely the best part of what we did. Early on, I got a meeting with a, um, with a school, and, and it was, and again, we didn't know anything about the school industry, so we didn't know the way it worked. So I show up, I had a friend whose kids went to the school, so the principal agrees to meet me, and I walk in and she says, literally, she says, look, I know who you are, I know why you're here, you guys are all the same. I'm like, excuse me? 
she goes, look, I start with ABC Company, and they promise me everything, and they screw up, and I throw them out, and then DEF comes in, and they promise me everything, and then they screw up, and then I throw them out, and then QRX comes in, and by the time I'm done with them, I'm back to ABC. She goes, I've been around the block. You guys are all the same. What do you got? I said, I'm leaving. I got nothing. I said, you know more about this than I do. But before I go, let me show you some pictures. And it was like Roadrunner cartoon. You could hear the screeching of her brain. She's looking at the, she goes, wait a second. These are school pictures? I'm like, yeah, this is what we do. She goes, wait, you're not like everybody else. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know everybody else. <laughs> this is what we do. She's like, what, literally, she's like, where do I sign? So what I realized is that what happens in the school industry a lot is there's some, you know, companies that do it, and a lot of them do a lot of schools, and it's like musical schools. So, you know, company A loses a school, but they don't care because company B is going to lose an, a different one, and they're going to swap, and they just pass the schools around. But if you come in with real photography, and you just treat people the way you treat your normal customers, and you're nice to them, and you take great pictures, guess what? You're never going to lose a school. I mean, we literally, I mean, we don't lose schools. We had one school that, I mean, I will be honest, they had a new admin, and we had kind of screwed something up that had nothing to do with photography. Um, but typically, you know what, nobody's perfect. You make a mistake, you fix it, you know, you move on. Um, often, you know, we find that if you can turn a lemon into lemonade, you actually even have a more committed fan. But in this one case, it was a new person from another town, and she wanted. Turns out, she wanted to bring in her own person. Her own person. So we lost the school, and and I mean, it's it's upsetting. I will tell you, it drives me crazy. Um, but it's a school that has an upper school and a lower school. So for years, we had the upper school, not the lower, because the person who ran it was getting ready to retire, and they didn't want to rock the boat till she retired. She finally retires, and now we have the upper and lower. And then the first year of that, they bring in the new person, and then we lose the upper. So now we only have the, we only have the lower. Um, but then we get a phone call. Um, you got the phone call. Yeah, I mean, it was a phone call um, from the school. And I actually was kind of confused if they were calling from the lower schools. They are talking about dates. And I thought we already had the dates in the calendar. Because they want to get dates. And I'm like, well, where are you calling from? And they're like, you know, whatever. Upper school. Upper school. I'm like, oh, the upper. And I'm like, well, wait, we don't work with you. <laughs> like, I don't remember, because he was new. I didn't know maybe he, like, made a, made a wrong, the wrong, Found number, the wrong number. Found yeah. the wrong number. And he goes, no, we want to work with you. And um, that contact she had a baby and she's not doing it and I'm taking over and there was a couple issues and well we need to meet so we, we can get back on your calendar we're back the parents were uh, not happy yes. not happy I mean we had a high school a county high school we only as a test we did one um, and what there were we got them everything they needed everything was great but there were a high school you've got different stakeholders you've got the sports per person the yearbook not the communication was un Unbelievably horrible. Anyway, they, they told us not to come back. So we're like, fine. And then we get the email. Would you consider coming back to us? And we have a meeting, and we actually love the business manager, manager in charge, and we would do anything for her. Um, and we worked out, the, you know, we worked out that, yes, when she told us what the problems were. I mean, here's what we're trying to say. The bar is low. Um, I don't want to knock anybody, but the people who've been doing school photography for a very, very, very long time, I think in many ways have lost sight of the photography, they've lost sight of service, they've lost sight of what's important to any business. And if you're in a community and you photograph a school, you do it the way you would normally treat your customers, you're going to be up here. I mean, the bar is, I mean, it, it's, it's really, really, from a photography standpoint, from a service standpoint, um, we booked a school, you're not going to believe this, a mom calls me from, not even my, I mean, an hour and a half away, would we come down? I'm like, well, yeah, because I look up the school and it's a great school. So she ordered her son, she was the parent in charge of the photography decision, and she ordered her son's picture, and she gets the wrong kid. And I will tell you that she's an attorney, I found out, but she's a sharp person. Not that you have to be all that sharp to know who your son is, but... <laughs> or to be an attorney. Or, well, uh, <laughs> true that. <laughs> So anyway, so that she gets the wrong picture, no big deal. She calls customer service, and it takes her a while to find the number, and then she finally gets the number, and she, anyway, no problem, we'll get you the right picture. So they send her the picture again. It's a different kid, but it's still not her kid. So she goes through the thing again, gets the wrong picture again. So now she's calling for the third time, and this is what got her to call us. When the person on the other end of the phone was telling her she was wrong, that was her son. She realized, maybe I'm dealing with a company I just, I just shouldn't be dealing with. 
and um, and 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 we went down. We met with her, and, and we photographed the school what, four, three, four years in a row now. Four, four years, we yeah. do we do family portraits down. There. I mean, it's, it's, it's you don't have to be that spectacular. You just have to be normal. Um, and we do really, really nice pictures, and we really kill ourselves, and we kill ourselves for our parents, and we're not perfect, but when we mess up, I mean, we, we don't sleep. I mean, we fix it so, so quickly. Um, but I'll just, I'll just give you an idea um, of kind of how we approach it, which is the same way you would approach it. And keep in mind that most school photographers, literally, it's one picture per kid. Sit here, smile, click, next, next. I mean, that's the environment. It's not enriching or enlivening to anybody, particularly the student on the other side of the camera. Um, but we signed a school, which is part of a big school district, where every school decides for themselves, and we were very excited to kind of get in there, and we're taking pictures of 500 kids, and we're doing class pictures, and the teachers are looking out of the lunchroom window, watching the choreography, because they've never seen anything like it. And towards the end, there's a student who comes up, who is severely, severely autistic, and he wears Bose noise-canceling headphones the entire time he's on the school grounds, and he doesn't talk, he communicates through like a tablet, iPad or something, and he has an aide just for him the entire time he's on, he's on the school grounds. Um, and it's time for his picture, and Brian actually was going to be his photographer the way it worked out, just the kids in lines, whatever, and the aide says to Brian, I don't think you're going to be able to photograph Jack. And Brian says, well, I, you know, let me see. And we're working with, you know, a 7200 lens. And it's outdoors, so if there's a flash, it's a little fill flash. So Brian's not right up in his face, and there's not all these lights going off. And Brian is, you know, some distance away, and he starts taking pictures. And Jack knows he's taking pictures, and I'll be honest, I, because I'm look, I look at the pictures later, they stunk. I mean, they were god-awful. Jack is nervous and tense, and his forehead, and he's making faces. But I keep looking at the pictures, and Brian didn't take one picture. He didn't take two pictures. He actually took about 80 pictures, but the last six were awesome. They were, they were, here's how good they were. If you didn't know that Jack was a special needs student, you looked at the pictures, you would think he was 100% like anybody else. So after the photo shoot, Brian tells me the story, and then he says, so then Brian gets it, and he knows the last six, he knows he's nailed it. Okay, I, you know, 80 pictures. It's not as many as I normally do, but uh, you know, I'll call it a day. Anyway, so Jack starts walking away, and he's typing on his iPad. And he gets up to Brian, and he turns the iPad around. And he says, he types, he goes, thank you for being kind to me. Thank you for being kind to me. A severely autistic student knew the difference between sit here, smile, click next, and hey, we're in this together. We're going to get it. And so Brian tells me the story, and I'm like, I mean, I'm almost like weeping when I, I mean, when I hear this. And that's an amazing story. And if it ended there, it would be ridiculous. But it doesn't even end there. And if you're out there, you're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. Because if I didn't know it, I wouldn't believe it either. I just want to stop you real quick. For the record, I don't take 80 pictures per kid. So everyone who just right, 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 on the right. other side of the, the most we kids, don't, right. we don't, we don't, that was, you know, but that, that's just, I just want to say that with what we do in our approach, if we need to take 80, we'll take 80, but we don't generally need to, but for special needs, it really works. So fast forward. Fast forward, I don't know, a year, year and a half, Brian is photographing a wedding, and he's at a hotel downtown D.C., and he's working with a party planner we work with a lot, and the party planner has a new assistant, and they've always got new assistants, that we don't always know the assistant so well, but Brian's in the bride's room, you know, the girl's getting ready, yada, yada, and then the bride goes into, like, the inner bedroom to put on her gown, and Brian starts talking to one of the assistants, Oh, are you married? Yeah, kids. Yeah, how many? Well, Brian's got. I got three kids. How many? And where's your kid? Where did you go to school? Oh, you know, whatever tree elementary yeah. elementary school. Really? We took pictures there. Who's your Who's your kid? She goes. You wouldn't know him. He's a special needs kid. And I go. What's his name? Oh, time out. Oh wait. One. Let me just throw in one thing. <laughs> While Brian's telling me the first story, and I'm looking at the pictures, he says to me, "Do you think the parents will notice?" And I'm from New York. I'm cynical. I'm like, no. I mean, right? Your wedding pictures, right? You kill yourself to do all these great things, and they buy all the bad do ones. Do they really care? Right? I mean, they don't care. They don't notice. They don't know what they're looking at half the time. Because we're allegedly taking school pictures, which I always say they're portraits that have been done at school. So we're like, do people really even see the difference? They really care. And, 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 and I'm, really, I'm on the no side. Right, and all the, like the, you know, the people that like 
the angle of the head and the tilt, all these, you know, the people don't, don't even notice it, but you notice it, so it makes a difference. So I say to me, I go, who knows if she even notices it? So I'm in the suite with her, with the, with the mom, and, and, and I go, who's your kid? She goes, my kid is Jack. I'm like, get out of here. Your kid is Jack. So the kid's mom, that I, the autistic kid, is the assistant. And she goes, oh, my God, you took the pictures. She starts crying. I start crying. The bride is kind of, like, freaked out. It was kind of a little weird start, to be honest with you, because she's, like, wondering what's, right, going, what's on. going on. She calls her husband to tell. So to answer the question. Did she notice? Did she notice? Yes. Did it impact her? Yes. Did she say it was the best picture? Because, really, all she wants her kid to do is look just like every other kid. And for me, I mean, I'm sure some. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm sure some of you have kids out there. Like, I love my kids, and they're healthy and great. I even love your kids. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty. I don't good. love you, but I love your kids. Sorry. And um, you know, to 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 see a kid that has challenges that, and I feel lucky that my kid, that I don't have to, you know, have every day have to, you know, that my kids are, you know, got, you know, thank God, are are, are great kids that I really. You know, have a not a soft spot, but I, I can you know I can't even really appreciate their situation. Where here's this mom, now, just kind of literally crying in front of me, really thanking me for just this really great image. And you have the skill to do that. Yeah. And how could that be? You're a school photographer, right? <laughs> but the reality is, school photography doesn't have to be what you all may think of school photography. School photography can be the most creative, rewarding, satisfying, enriching for yourself, for your company, for your school, for your students. It can be the most wonderful kind of photography out there. And oh, by the way, it repeats every year. And parents love their kids and want to buy pictures if you give them choices. And I'm not interested in being in a race to the bottom. I'm not interested in giving half the money we collect to the school because, you know, they're used to getting commissions. You can have a different approach, and over the next four weeks, we'll go through the how of it. But if today's about the why, the why is because parents want good pictures of their kids. And maybe with long roll cameras and the way school photography used to be on film, it had to be one picture per kid in a certain way with a background and big lights. But what we've learned is that it doesn't have to be that way. And a lot of the people at SPAC who were telling me the first year, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that, now they get up and all I do is hear them complain about how parent participation rates are down, how the average sale is down, how it's not working the way, the way it used to. And I just keep saying to myself, Guys, have you ever thought about taking a nicer picture? It doesn't have to be that hard. So you can take nice pictures at schools, and you've got a guaranteed customer base, and it keeps repeating, and you can get really spoiled when you walk down the street and strangers come up and thank you for what you do. And it can be a terrific part of your business. Um, and it doesn't have to be the way you probably yep. think of it. And you can do it in less time, believe it or not. And we'll go through this in later weeks when we get to workflow. We can photograph a school in basically four hours. And depending on the number of students, we'll generate anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000 in sales from those four hours. Now, you can't show up just by yourself. But assuming you know some other photographers or you have friends who are photographers, you believe... I mean, here's the other crazy thing. If you take the kids outside or put them in front of Seamless and just let them be them, you don't have to be this amazing photographer. When we do yearbook pictures, which is kind of the sit here, lean, smart, right? We need our best photographers for that because everybody sits down and they do this, and then you say sit up, and they do this, and then you got to do this, and they got to lean, and they got to tilt, but not too much. Right? By the time you have somebody who can see all of that so it looks good, you need a really good photographer. But let a kid be outdoors or just in front of white or colored seamless and just get them giggling and get them laughing. And you have your lights set up in advance. You know, now you need somebody who's a photographer but who's also a little bit of a camp counselor, to quote you. Yeah, that's right. And you're getting spectacular, spectacular results that are easier than. The other approach. So, so um, just to kind of, I mean, we, we, we try to take a better picture, obviously. And, and I hope um, our passion 
Uh, Neil tends to be excitable. His passion, our passion, really, because I think we want to have, we want to get back to that passion. I think what we were getting is we were just getting, you know, grinded down. You know, there was, with Pinterest and all this stuff, the expectations were off the charts. You made one layer on a wedding, and it was a disaster. And you just couldn't recover, and it was, it was awful. But now, the fun, I mean, we're getting out, we're taking, I tell our photographers, we're not curing cancer. We're out there taking pictures of kids outside on a nice day. Like, have fun. You know, we always said one of our things before you went out and did a wedding or any sh any shoot we did, our company kind of slogan would be, have fun, take beautiful pictures. The photographer would say to the assistant and vice versa. Yeah. Those, those are your marching orders right before you walk into the bride's room. Have fun, take beautiful pictures. But don't, as you know, make no mistake, as they say, we take the business very seriously. When we've had you know years of sales training. One of the things that we've done in our market is we, you know, before it was just the one photographer. If you didn't get you know, Monty or Clay, then you wouldn't hire them. Um, we really made the assistant, the associate photographer, a legitimate kind of option. We're now kind of everyone has a couple different people, so we kind of look at things from a, always from a different perspective. So we take our bit the business end pretty seriously, just as when our sales process, our marketing process, we had a you know we're taking more than one picture, so we had to had to create a system that works because most systems are geared for one image, where now. Since we're taking five, six, seven, fifteen images a kid, now we have to figure out well how are we going to match them up? How are we going to have it work? How we have a tie our system tie into Miller's system? And so we have a seamless process fulfillment ordering system. So we actually cut back our staff last year with our ordering process right. when we increased by thirty percent in our business and our orders. So we now I don't want to sit here and just say yeah we take a better picture and everything works out great. We also really work really hard. And making sure that our system is sound, we know our fulfillment, we know our statistics, our process, our streamline, and we're constantly always looking to be better. We don't feel that we know everything. We've figured everything out. We are. We still kind of look at it like we're new. We're working really hard to make a difference. We want the schools to feel also that they're working with somebody who's continually trying to get better. And we tweak our system. We used to show up and we'd have paper with camera cards with everybody's name, and we would take a picture of the camera card like everybody else did, and now we've got it to where it's on our phone. So oh, I didn't think the schools would care or notice, and they're like, oh, my God, that's wonderful, because everybody's trying to be green, and there's no more sheets of paper, and every photographer has it on his phone. And if a school, which never happens, messes <laughs> up the list they send us, now within 10 minutes on photo day, we can correct it, and all the photographers can download the update to their phone within 10 minutes of finding the problem, and the schools are just like gaga at that which gets back to not losing a school. So the purpose of this morning, for those of you who are still here and not snoring, was to talk about really kind of why you might want to consider school photography. We've learned that it's the part of photography where you can actually still have fun, satisfy people more than you can imagine. The psychic payback is ridiculous. The economic payback is as good as any other kind of photography you're doing, if not better because of the repeatability. And you can go back to where photography is fun, where you can have more time, make more money, and have more fun. So over the next few weeks, for those who want to learn more, we'll show you how that's possible. But we think that this is an idea whose time has come, that having independent photographers in the markets doing individual schools is the way to get the best results and for the photographers to make the most money and literally have the most fun and get back some of their time because there's a workflow that will actually, after photo day, free you up from the hours and hours of editing and everything else that goes on. So for those of you who want to come back, we'll go through all that over the next four weeks. Gene, how are we doing on time, and do you have any questions? Uh, we got about nine or ten minutes here left up. A couple questions come in. One thing, that book that you guys showed, could you bring it up again and so they can kind of see some, some pictures here? Uh, also, I'll just tell everyone that you can also go to freedspirit.com. Maybe he could zoom in on that. Freedspirit.com and see some of their work out there as well. For those of you who also ask about signing up for the next webinars, you go to Miller's website, go to our blog area, and you can sign up for the additional webinars coming up, which I was going to mention later, but uh, uh, good questions coming in on that. Uh, one thing that did come up here, guys, is with the school. Is uh, this a will they get a kickback or they get a percentage or is is this something where it's just strictly based upon sales where you're you're going into the school? 
You know, that, that's a great question. I will tell you in our world, it's a very much of a mixed bag, but the overlying or underlying principle to me is, absent anything else of value, all you can offer a school is money. But there are a lot of things that schools would like more than money, we've learned. Um, and just to give you an example, I was at a meeting, we had a recap meeting at a school, and I've got a large check in my pocket, and we're meeting with the admin, and, and I say, you know, it seems to me like your parents are happy. We see the orders. She goes, oh, the parents love you guys. I said, and I think you and your staff are happy because we were doing a number of things beyond student photography for them. We were covering, they have a, it was a, an independent school. They have a dinner for parents. Graduation. Um, graduation. A lot of things we were doing um, at, at no charge. She goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we love you guys. I said, so, you know. I've got a little bit of a problem. Let me be honest. It seems like the parents are really, really happy, and you all, the school's really, really happy. The only one that's not working for is me because I'm doing all these other things, and I have to give you a commission, and it, that doesn't really, I'm upside down, and if it means next year that I've got to raise the prices to give you the commission, and that's going to make your parents not as happy, and in, just between you and me and the overall scheme of things, to me, it was a big check, but this is a huge school with 1,100 students. I'm like, do you care about the money? And she looked at me and said, no, keep it. I'd rather my parents get the same price because they're thrilled, we're thrilled. I don't need the commission. So there can be other ways of adding value to the relationship. Um, we don't talk about kickbacks. To me, kickbacks are something that's illegal. I think commissions that are disclosed are, are legal. Um, and we have some schools that get commissions, but we find that if you have a fresh approach and willing to take care of the school and be creative, often you can find other ways that cost you less. Because a dollar in a check costs me a dollar. A dollar of photography service costs me less than a dollar. Yeah, we've, we've, we've found that when schools want to work with us, and I had a meeting this other day, and she was talking about she gets um, works with a large national company, you know, uh, was like thirty-five or four thousand dollars. I said, well. I can't do that. I said, well, what did you get last year? Which direction is that check going, up or down? And it was clearly down um, over, over, the, over the course of years. The past years, years yeah, it yeah. kept going down. I said, well, let's try and change that. But I can't commit to doing that. But let's figure out a way that we can, whether it's through additional services, a special uh, fundraising day, or how we contribute and give back to really make sure those dollars in a different way work, which works for us. So now what happens is that principal is really now working with us to make it work. So it's not really an adversarial conversation. Now it's more of like, okay, let's be part. We because we try to consider our schools to be true partners, and how can we now partner to get you the dollars and the experience, or whether it's the photo shoots, whatever you want, and then make it work. And that's kind of where we're slowly changing that, or not as slowly. Where our commission that we are paying is really going down and down and down. I mean, let's be honest. You all know this, or if you don't, let me be the first to tell you. Who pays the commission? Not the photography company. The parents because it's just built into the price. And we're very upfront about that. And we, and we have a chart and we show the principles. If you, you know, I can charge 10%, I can charge this price, or 10% or 20 or 30. I'll give you an 80% commission, but here's what your price is gonna be. And no one's gonna buy it. And they're smart. I have yet to meet a stupid principal. They get it right away. So being transparent and honest and above board, they decide how much of a commission they want. Because they're deciding they want they want to work with us, and that's how they're making it work. Gene, any other pressing questions? All right, great questions, guys. Again, if you want to see some of, of Neil and Brian's work, go to the website freedspear.com. I, I posted it out here on the chat, so uh, it gives you a great opportunity to see some of the work. You know, uh, some of the questions come across was dealing with you know you're shooting 30 pictures of a kid. Uh, does it get kind of overwhelming, kind of going through some of that, and retouching, and and you know, handling all that, putting all that online? You know, uh, speak just a couple seconds just on on kind of that. Idea workflow. I know you guys will be doing that in a later one, but uh, just kind of maybe touch upon that. So, it, I mean, it it can be. We have learned a lot. The first when we first started, I think Brian mentioned we were shooting raw, and just the processing of the raw images alone was killing us. I mean, was killing us. But one thing to keep in mind is we want to have a we want the expression in the picture to be priceless. But a lot of other parts have to be commensurate with the price we're charging. So we don't retouch the pictures unless parents pay for us to retouch them. So retouch, you know, 
weddings and portraits normally, a lot of people build in a lot of extra service as we used to. But on the school side, if you're selling an 8x10 for $10 or $15 or maybe even $20, we're not doing a lot of processing to that picture. Um, you know, we're going to make sure the exposure is right, brightness, color, but we've got a workflow, and we'll go through this in more detail, that the photographers literally take the pictures, on the back of their camera, delete the blinks, yeah. tag a yearbook picture, and you can be done, literally done, at that point. Right. What, and I don't want to sit here and tell you that we shoot 30 pictures at every school. One thing I will say is a really important message is that, is that every school is different. You know, whether the culture of the school, Absolutely. whether uh, how you shoot it, the demographics. You know, I'm not going to sit here and we go, we shoot, go to every school and we shoot 30 pictures. You know, some schools, we may shoot six, six a person or seven or eight a kid. And we have schools that we do a pre-order with basically we're looking for one picture because that's the right program for, for that, that school. school. So I think We don't do many of those, but yeah. we do some. So I think it's important to note that instead of trying to have a one school approach that tr you try and fit in, like, a, you know, for everyone, we don't look at it that way. We try and figure out what's the right program for that school that fits in with our systems. We'd be most efficient, most efficient about the number of pictures we take, the number of pictures we show, and, and how they buy. So it's a, it's all we're looking at it from every point of view. So like I said, we really care about the way we take pictures. We really care about the process, and we really care about maximizing our opportunity to gain the most dollars. And let me just say one thing. I mean, we're here and doing the webinar, and we really believe passionately in what we're saying about the, the approach to school photography for everybody. We also happen to have worked it out in a way that we are working with other photographers who want to work with our system, um, and where all they have to do is take the pictures, delete the blanks tag one picture per student for the yearbook, upload, and be done. And when I say be done, I mean literally be done, where everything gets uploaded to an online account where parents are emailed, they can start buying, the orders are processed and fulfilled by Millers, and you don't have to touch them again other than to watch the money hit your bank account. So while we are very nice people and altruistic and Millers asked us to do this, there is um, something potentially in it for us because if anybody wants to get involved there's a lot of software out there um, and we'll be happy to tell you about some of it or, or Gene or, or Brian in the school department can tell you about it. We're photographers. Um, we happen to have software and things we've done that make our life easy and we're able to offer it to other people. Um, being photographers first, it's got a lot of things that can make your life easy. So literally you can shoot, delete the blanks, tag the yearbook, upload done. and be done or you can have as much or as little more involvement beyond that as you want. All right, guys. Great questions here. Great uh, uh, great information shared with everybody. Appreciate your time so much, you guys being here and sharing with, with uh, everyone. Uh, we're going to start wrapping up with our, our session here today so that we can uh, keep everybody on schedule with, with maybe what you have going on. We had lots of great questions today. Just appreciate it, and I wish we could get to all of them. I will be sharing these with Brian and Neil, there's some ideas here on workflow. We will be talking about that in a later session here about workflow, so that should be coming up. Well, we hope that you'll be able to join us here and, and for future sessions. Uh, if you do have a question in the meantime before we, we meet back here next Thursday, here is an email address for Neil at freedspirit.com. And that freed spirits, we can also go online to view some of their work and, and get an idea of uh, some of the ways they're capturing and photographing. Uh, children, so it's, it's a great website. I've been out there myself a couple of times. Really, really well done. Here's our email address. I'll pop this back up online here a few minutes later so that you can get that. But uh, please feel free to send him a question. Neil, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to interject. Um, Neil is N E A L at freedspirit.com, and Brian is just B R Y A N, Brian at freedspirit.com. And we will, if you have questions, feel free to email. We will get back to everybody who sends in questions. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Okay. Again, we just want to say thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, we appreciate it greatly. Thank you for choosing Miller's. Thank you for, for being here with us today. But as always, have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you again online real soon. And here again is their email address for Neil. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.